Hello there, Idri here. Today we're going to be looking back at the timing video that I did for all the cargo ships in game. Now with the tourism DLC we brought in a brand new class of ship and that was the world class reefer. And it was heralded by the devs to be the fastest intercontinental ship in game. However when it was originally released it was not working as intended. What we mean by that is when you have 300 points specced into trade ships you will get the elite magnate buff which is a 25% movement speed buff on the actual ships. Now this was applying to all the cargo ships in game apart from the world class reefer. So it put the world class reefer at 25% movement speed reduction on all the world, on the other class of ships in game. Now with the game update 11 that came in as you can see now the world class reefer is actually getting this buff so now it's getting the same buff as the other cargo ships is it a contender to be brought into your existing fleet let's take have a look at this so the closest ship to compare the two is going to be the regular cargo ship as they both have the same storage capacity as you can see cargo ship is six item slots as well as the world class reefer However, the difference here is the actual number of item sockets. The World Class Reefer has one and the regular cargo ship has two. The difference between them in influence is a cargo ship is three points of influence and the World Class Reefer is six. Now, if we have a look at the base movement speed, the cargo ship is 13 kilometers, whereas the World Class Reefer, unbuffed this is, is at 13.8 and they both have the elite magnate buff on them so unbuffed moving around between the islands in map the world class reefer is going to be quicker than a regular cargo ship now the world class reefer does have a hidden bonus speed applied to it as well because the normal movement speed will actually different between the actual transition into continent between the actual maps However, the World Class Reefer has a innate boost on that as well, which goes past its normal movement speed. So now when we're looking at the actual times that I've done, and this spreadsheet will be linked in the description down below on my Google Drive for anyone that wants to download it. We're going to be looking at the timings on the ships that have no items in their cargo hold, as the World Class Reefer has the same reduction on speed as a cargo ship however most people that are going to be running a lot of cargo ships will be using the cargo slow down reduction items which can get rid of this negative effect anyway and they will also have movement speed and loading speed for the best item in game anyway now this spreadsheet was created pre docklands so i had calculations on here for loading speeds and loading times so I've added an extra on here so you can actually put in the loading speed of your Docklands Pier and how many items are going to go in and out and it'll tell you what the actual time in seconds is for the actual ship to go in and out. However, the more important thing we're going to be looking at is the actual transition times between the maps. So up here, as you can see, we have our World Class Reefer versus a cargo ship. We have a Great Eastern and the biggest competitor is going to be the airship. Now, the Great Eastern and the cargo ship will have a standardized time of transferring, say, between the New World of 4 minutes and 14 seconds. And an airship, which has the fastest movement speed in game, will transfer at 2 minutes 25. Now, if we have a look at the World Class Reefer, as you can see, it actually goes from the Old World to the New World in two minutes and 25 seconds. So it is as quick as an airship and a lot quicker than a regular cargo ship. So as you can see, that is the hidden bonus movement speed between transitions between continents. However, the World Class Reefer doesn't actually have the same timings as an airship for all the other timings. However, it is very close. As you can see here, it goes two minutes and 38 from the Old World to the Arctic versus 2 minutes and 29 seconds for an airship. 
and 4 minutes and 45 seconds for a regular cargo ship. So if we have a look at the longest time at transitioning, if we have a look from Mbessa to the Arctic, a regular cargo ship is 7 minutes and 39 seconds versus the world-class reefer, which is 4 minutes and 12 seconds, which is a huge difference if you're transferring items between the actual continents. And again, if you have a look at an airship, it's 3 minutes and 55. Now, the big difference between the airship and the world-class reefer, which is its closest trans intercontinental transition speed, is the fact that a the airship is affected by the wind direction when it's in a map, and also the fact that the airship only has four slots for storage. So you're going to be losing 50% of the storage capacity on an airship versus a world-class reefer. So per slot, the world-class reefer is the actual quickest item or quickest ship for transferring large goods across map. Now, if we have a look at the world-class reefer versus cargo ships or even an airship for transferring in map between your islands in the same map, so islands in the new world to islands in the new world, because it only has one item slot in the actual world-class reefer, it is going to be locked into a limited amount of boosting of speed, whereas a cargo ship and an airship have more slot items, which you can actually boost it out for the movement speed even higher. So now, if you're going to be doing in-map transfers, an airship or a Great Eastern or cargo ship, excuse me, cargo ship is a fantastic ship. The World Class Reefer is still a great ship for inter-map transferring. However, if you're going to be utilizing Traveling between maps, the World Class Reefer is a fantastic ship these days. Especially now it's got that Elite Magnate buff, it is now a completely viable ship. So, is the World Class Reefer ship worth it? In my opinion, it is definitely worth it now. Especially when you start stacking it with people like the Purveyor of Tall Ships and its one available slot. Which allows you to boost movement speed by 20%. Reduce loading speed by 75% and get rid of all cargo, cargo slowdown. So it's going to be running at its full speed, which with that 20% movement speed buff, we're now moving at 15.9 knots. So now it is going to be going between the actual islands in your map at a full increased speed and transferring intercontinentally faster than any of the other steam cargo ships. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy it, I do appreciate any subscription on the channel and any likes on the video. And again, there will be a link in the description down below to download the spreadsheet. And comment down below if there is any other videos you'd like me to cover off next. Stay safe and I'll catch you on the next one.